everyone uh, welcome to the chemistry class i am shanu sagar uh, today we will see the first chapter of chemistry that is matter in our surroundings so before going to start the lesson uh, go for a contents so these are the contents in this lesson first one about introduction second uh, physical nature of matter third is uh, characteristics of particles of matter fourth is states of matter uh, fifth uh, diffusion sixth one effects of temperature seventh uh, interconversion of states of matter and uh, last one eighth evaporation and the factors affecting the evaporation so let us study about the introduction what is introduction what is about the matter everything in this universe which is made up of material which scientists have named a matter the air we breathe the food we eat stones clouds stars plants and animals even a small drop of water or particle of a sand everything is a matter not only that even you students uh, you studied in a previous class uh, that uh, about the metals and nonmetals synthetic and natural materials acids and bases those all are nothing but the matter then uh, what is the specific definition for a matter let us see matter is a substance which have the mass volume and occupies space and uh, matter is made up of tiny particles very small particles uh, notebook pen car bike stars air water glass etc we can call as a matter then uh, what uh, the substance which is made up of uh, mass and uh, which have space what is a mass then the number of atoms present in the substance is called a mass the total number of atoms present in any substance we can call it as a mass so uh, the sign unit of mass is kilogram for example if you uh, weigh uh, 60 kgs in uh, earth uh, but if you went on a uh, moon uh, your only weight is reduced but not mass the mass remains same if you went anywhere so mass should be a constant the next uh, non matter what is non matter and why should we study about the non matter anything that doesn't have a mass and volume and which doesn't occupy space are called non matter as the definition says uh, the energy gravity smell taste sound heat emotions ideas vacuum light electricity these all substances uh, doesn't have a mass and it will not occupy space for example if you want uh, 5 kgs of energies uh, no, no no any person cannot give the energies because uh, we cannot uh, uh, take it because it doesn't have a, a mass and it, it will not occupy space we can't so, uh, show the energy only we can feel that we can feel the smell we can feel the taste we can feel the heat uh, or even ideas we can share we ideas but we can we cannot uh, can share our ideas but uh, we, we cannot say that uh, how much ideas ideas you share whether it is 5 kgs or 10 kgs no because uh, it cannot be uh, weighable it cannot occupy space and it doesn't have a mass so those substances even vacuum light electricity is also called as a non matter it is not a matter uh, next concept uh, early indian philosophers classified matter uh, in the form of five basic elements air earth fire sky and water and are called as panchatatva they called them as a panchatatva according to them everything living or non living was made up of these five basic elements but today scientists evolved two types of classification of matter based on physical properties and chemical nature about the chemical nature of particles uh, we will see in a second chapter later on uh, in today's concept in today uh, this chapter we will study about the physical nature of matter and what is physical nature of matter for a long time ago there were two views about the nature of matter some scientists believed that matter was continuous like a block of wood or sheet of glass whereas others believe that matter was made up of particles like that of sand so the students whether the matter is continuous or particulate means uh, if your matter is existing whether it is continuous or whether it, uh, it is made up of particles so let's watch the video to know that whether the matter, matter is continuous or it is made up of particles particles of matter have interparticular space the spaces between the particles of matter can be shown by performing an activity. So let us proceed an activity. For this we need a water bottle, 250 ml beaker, <coughs> a tablespoon, salt with in a watch glass, glass rod. So let us proceed an activity. Take a 250 ml beaker and add a 100 ml clear water to it. Mark the water level. 
before doing the experiment and add a, a spoonful of salt to it stir the mixture carefully so that uh, salt has to be dissolved completely so after dissolving just uh, mark the level of water observe the water level before adding and after adding the salt to it so what will conclude before adding salt and after adding salt the rise in the sugar level is not increased because uh, the particles have mixed inside that means it have fixed the spaces inside so that the particles of water have spaces between them and that particles of salt fit in these spaces so we conclude that the matter is particulate not continuous thank you okay in this uh, video we come to know that the matter is uh, particulate uh, not uh, continuous okay uh, then if matter is made up of particles then what are the characteristics of particles so there are total four types of uh, characteristics of a particles we will come to know one uh, each by an activity so first characteristic of particle is the particles of matter are very small second part characteristic is the particles of matter have a spaces between them third one the particles of matter are moving continuously or constantly and last fourth one the particles of matter attract each other so let's see one by one with an activity so first one the particles of matter are very small uh, let's do an activity uh, take a two to three crystals of potassium permanganate or uh, you can take as a or ink also and dissolve them in 100 ml of water take out approximately 10 ml of the above solution and put it into 90 ml of clear water take out and 10 ml of the solution and put it into another 90 ml of pure water keep on diluting the solution like this five to eight times uh, and even uh, you can do this uh, procedure uh, activity uh, with the help of uh, Dettol also so every time if you go on diluting the solution uh, you still at the last uh, beaker also you will get a smell so how uh, we will see with the uh, help of video also for observation let's see the video let's begin the activity take uh, two to three crystals of potassium permanganate and dissolve them in the beaker containing 100 ml of water now take 10 ml of the solution and add it to another beaker containing 90 ml of water repeat this procedure for three more times what did you observe you will observe that as soon as the crystals of potassium permanganate are dissolved in the first beaker the water becomes violet pink now when the solution is repeatedly diluted the intensity of the color gradually decreases so we can say that two to three crystals of potassium permanganate consist millions of particles that can be transferred from one beaker to another therefore causing the water to become pink in color so we come to know from this activity that the conclusion from this activity is the particles of matter are smaller in size Okay, uh, by the last video, uh, we'll come to know that uh, just a few crystals of potassium permanganate or ink can color a large volume of water. So we conclude that there must be millions of tiny particles in just one crystal of potassium permanganate, which keep on dividing themselves into smaller and smaller particles. That's why if you uh, dissolve a few crystals only in, in uh, another beaker, it's gone uh, distributing its particles. Even at the last beaker also, we will get a, a small a few uh, what you call the color of a uh, potassium permanganate okay uh, let's uh, see the next characteristic of particle that is the particles of uh, matter have a spaces between them how we'll come to know that uh, the particles of matter have spaces in between them in previous activities we saw that particles of sugar salt potassium permanganate got evenly distributed in water similarly when we make a tea coffee or lemonade or we can say it as a limbo pani Particles of one type of matter get into the spaces between the particles of the other. So this shows that there is enough space between the particles of matter. For example, if we take a beaker and if we add a, uh, salt or sugar in it uh, in the water, 
uh, it will dissolve completely and we saw that there is no level increase in the sugar level because already uh, the space inside the sugar water uh, is more that's why it, it acquires the space so let's see the video to confirm this the second uh, activity needs a glass of water spoon and uh, sugar particles so we'll start the activity so first i'm going to immerse the spoon into this glass of water and carefully observe the level of water as you can see the water level rises a bit because the water level rises more clearly with the longer object longer objects will see that the water level rises clearly now what i will do uh, once i will take a uh, sugar and i will add a uh, in the water now we will see the water level carefully is there any rise of water level no no rise in level of water why why it's so because sugar grain breaks into tiny tiny particles when they are dissolved in water so these tiny particles uh, occupy spaces between the water molecules that's why the level of water doesn't arise so this experiment shows that particles of matter have spaces between them thank you okay students uh, what will come to know by this activity uh, the particles of uh, matter have spaces between them will come to know that okay uh, whether the spaces uh, will found in now solid liquid gas all type no because can we uh, could you add a stone in stone or duster in duster or pen in pen no not possible because the space between the solid particles is minimum but the space between the liquid particles is more and uh, uh, that's why the sugar are dissolved in a water but sugar will not dissolve in the sugar itself uh, next the space between the gaseous particles is maximum uh, 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 it is an example also i can say you uh, the air is a mixture of many gases because of uh, uh, diffusion because of uh, easily it can uh, mix in that so what is the diffusion that we'll see in a third activity third uh, characteristic particle is about diffusion only what is diffusion the particles of matter are moving continuously or constantly so let us see the video uh, to know that what is the diffusion <coughs> take a crystal of copper sulfate or potassium permanganate and put it into a glass of hot water or take another crystal and put it into the cold water do not stir the solution for some time let the crystals settle at the bottom now you can see the observe any change in crystals in the glass Yes, the rate of mixing of crystal into water is differing from one glass to another glass. Here the particles of matter are moving continuously which is called as kinetic energy. As temperature increases, particles move faster. So mixing of crystal is faster in warm water. But mixing of crystals is slow in cold water. Intermixing of two different particles of matter on their own is called as diffusion. So don't you think that why mixing is faster in warm water? Because uh, the particles attract with each other and the particles are held together with the maximum force. Now let us learn why it happens. So uh, next concept is, uh, we, learnt about in, uh, we learnt in previous video about the kinetic energy. What is kinetic energy? The energy possessed by the particles due to its motion is called kinetic energy. So we learned about the diffusion also. What is the diffusion? Intermixing of different particles of matter on their own is called diffusion. So I told you, uh, a gaseous can diffuse easily. Uh, liquids will diffuse somehow, but the solids cannot diffuse with each other. We will not mix with the duster in duster or a pen in pen or uh, stone in stone because uh, particles possess kinetic energy uh, as the temperature rises particles move faster in a gaseous that's why uh, uh, what why that uh, why this uh, uh, intermixing of different particles of matter why this uh, hot water particles when dissolved in hot water mixes fast because of the kinetic energy 
possessed by them okay for example uh, if you take a uh, hot water and if you add dissolve or if you add sugar in that it will dissolve easily but uh, if you want to add sugar in a cold water we need to stir it because uh, the kinetic uh, energy is low in a uh, cold particles or else i can tell you one more example uh, when a hot sizzling food uh, when your mother prepares you will you will get a smell of that food as easily because of uh, the kinetic energy but uh, can you get a smell of an ice cream which is kept in fridge for a far distance no because only uh, the heat or temperature can make the gaseous particles to possess kinetic energy faster okay uh, then next uh, kinetic energy is where is uh, maximum kinetic energy is maximum in the gases it is uh, minimum in solids i think uh, there is no kinetic energy at all in the uh, solids little uh, kinetic energy we can see in uh, solids or else you can see a, a smell of an incense stick agarbatti which will call if you kept in very far distance we will get a smell because uh, it reaches us uh, several meters away because of the kinetic energy or even a smell of a hot sizzling food uh, we can reach for far distance because of this kinetic energy of the particles okay the next concept why this uh, potassium permanganate or ink diffuses faster in hot water and slow in cold water which you saw in our previous video because of kinetic energy of particles increases on increasing the temperature that is particles move faster at high temperature but uh, therefore the ink or potassium permanganate will diffuse faster in hot water than in cold water so uh, we will get the conclusion by this video that the particles of hot water have more kinetic energy and they will intermix faster with the ink particles or potassium permanganate k mn4 particles let's see the last uh, characteristic particle that is the particles of matter attract each other yes the particles of matter attract each other in other words we can say that particles of matter have force acting between them this force keeps the particles together the strength of this force of attraction however differs from one kind of matter to other how can you say that the force of attraction is same uh, on all no Uh, can you say like that no because force of attraction is different in different matter in force of attraction in solids is different liquids is different and gaseous is different uh, the force of attraction between the particles in solids is maximum uh, in a liquid it is intermediate and in gases it is negligible uh, as i can give example uh, uh, we'll see the video first and i will give the example later on <coughs> now let us take an iron nail a piece of chalk and a rubber band now let's try to break them by hammering cutting and stretching okay now uh, next uh, do you think which particle are held together with the maximum force iron nail because it need extra energy to break them next activity uh, open a water tap and try to break the stream can you able to cut the stream no because uh, we cannot but how does the stream remain together because the force of attraction the particles of matter have maximum force of acting between them so the force kept the stream to remain together if we even if we kept a finger uh, if it crosses and again it joins regains uh, and i will tell you one more example if you hit with a, a, a stone or a, or a rock uh, the person may get injured because of strong internal force of attraction if you hit with the water you may get little pain but have you uh, heard any person uh, hit by the balloon uh, admitted in hospital no because the gases uh, doesn't have any uh, intermolecular force of attraction in them because the force of uh, attraction between the particles in gases is very less uh, thank you students i think you understood the concepts of all uh, today's concept is this much uh, next uh, concept we will discuss about the states of matter that is solids liquids and gases thanks for watching the video